Good morning. Today we're celebrating the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. We'll follow the order of service, not printed in our bulletin. Uh, so a couple months ago, as the pandemic started to ease, we went back to our regular method of communion distribution. And today we're starting to go back again to something we did before the pandemic, and that is encourage either using the hymnal or the service will be projected on the uh, wall behind or on either side of the altar. So uh, no longer printing out everything as we did during the pandemic. So feel free to use your hymnal or just uh, read off the wall. <clears throat> we'll turn to our opening hymn, Join in Cana's Feast. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah, 
chapter 58. Why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure, and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. In such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself. Is it to bow down his head like a reed, or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up steadily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call the Lord, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thought of God, even the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are a folly to him. He is not able to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. 
In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. We sing our next hymn. You may be seated.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, taken from the Holy Gospel reading for today. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. This is the text. You may be seated. <clears throat> King Solomon of the Old Testament was not only the wisest and richest king in the entire Bible, but he's also a great builder. It took him over 20 years to build the temple and his palace. And he didn't stop there. He went on and built a wall around the city of Jerusalem, and he built at least four other cities all during his reign problem was all that building came at a cost. He worked his subjects to the bone. The Bible calls it forced labor. It's pretty much no better than slavery. So when King Solomon died, his subjects came to Rehoboam, his son, who was the next king, and said, your father really worked us hard. Now, maybe make things a little easier for us. And Rehoboam said, well, come back in three days, and I'll give you an answer. So during those three days, King Rehoboam consulted with two different groups of people. First, he consulted with his father's advisors, King Solomon's advisors, who were older. And they told him, you know, if you do what the people say and make things easier on them, they will serve you their whole lives. They will be devoted to you. So that's what you should do. Make things easier. And then he consulted his friends, the people he grew up with, the young people. And they told him the very opposite thing. They, he, they said to Rehoboam, nope, don't make things easier. Make things even harder, much harder on these people. And since they were his friends, that's what Rehoboam did. When they came back three days later, he told them, my father worked you hard, but I'm going to work you even harder. And so they rebelled. They revolted against King Rehoboam. And the northern half of the country split away from the southern half that was ruled by Rehoboam. And, and they got their own king, and the country was split up for many, many years. <clears throat> Rehoboam, the only reason Rehoboam was still allowed... <clears throat> to rule over any part of the promised land was because of his grandfather, King David. God had told King David, you will never fail to have one of your descendants on the throne. So for the sake of King David, God allowed Rehoboam to continue to rule over this, what is known as the southern kingdom, the land of Judah. <clears throat> now it's very common when a new leader comes in for changes to happen. And if it's been a difficult time for the people, they've had a lot of struggles, it's very typical for people then to hope that with the new leader, things will get easier. We hear it every election cycle. All the politicians promise, I'm going to make things better. I'm going to make things easier. And sometimes it actually happens. And sometimes not so much. Now, when Jesus came along, some people thought maybe he's going to make things easier for us. Matthew 9 tells us that this is what Jesus found. He said, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So no doubt they were looking for a change. They wanted things to be easier. But as we see in our text, Jesus makes it very clear He's not going to make things any easier. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Every, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you 
that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That doesn't sound like Jesus is planning to make things any easier on the people. But there was no revolt. The people in Rehoboam's day, as I said, they revolted and they said, we're not having any of this. But no one revolted against Jesus. Instead, the crowds kept growing and growing and more and more people kept following Jesus and wanted to hear him and follow him. And why is that? Why was there no revolt? When Jesus made it clear, he wasn't going to make it any easier. It's because by the power of the Holy Spirit, the people realized that only Jesus could give them the perfect righteousness that God required. As Jesus himself says, I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets. And the people realized he was doing it. He was perfect. And only through faith in him would they ever hope to have the perfection that God required. He did not need to fulfill the law and the prophets for his own benefit. No, he's the almighty son of God. He didn't need to fulfill anything for his own benefit. He did it all for us. He fulfilled the law and the prophets for us who never could, never did, never will, no matter how long we live. He did it for us to fulfill the law and the prophets, every single dot, every single iota, he did and fulfilled. And that's what Paul is talking about in our epistle reading for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is, first of all, to give us the complete and perfect righteousness of Christ through our baptism into his death and resurrection, and then tells us to go out and do and be what we already are in Christ. That's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's the wisdom the world doesn't get. Even the wisest people of the world do not understand. That first and foremost, God gives us perfect righteousness in Christ and then sends us out simply to live up to that righteousness that is already ours. And it is truly something that is, can only be taught by the Holy Spirit. As Paul says, the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit of God. Only the Spirit can teach us to know these things. That's why the people did not abandon Jesus. The people that realized he was their savior. The only way to receive and to fulfill, achieve the righteousness that God demanded was through faith in Christ. <clears throat> All other religions of the world turn around the other way based on the wisdom of man. You work, you strive to be righteous, and then God somehow owes it to you to give you eternal life. That's the wisdom of the world. And God turns that all around and says, no, you are never going to be righteousness, righteous enough. Let me give you the perfect righteousness of Christ, then live up to what you already have. And that's in essence what Jesus is saying earlier in the gospel reading for today when he talks about salt and light. Notice he says, you are the salt of the earth. He doesn't say, you have to work and strive to become the salt. No, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth because I say so. God tells us we are salt. And so we're salt. And then he says, so don't lose your saltiness. Be salt. Be what you already are. Because I said you are. You are salt. Same, to, same is true with light. You are the light of the world. Not if you work hard enough, you can become light. No. By the power of my almighty word, by the gifts that I bestow on you through holy baptism and my holy supper, you are the light of the world. So now go out and shine. Don't hide that light. Shine in this dark world so that people may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. And this is not an easy thing for even for those with a lot of faith. As Luther points out, even someone, 
Even those who have a lot of faith still struggle with this because deep down inside of us, we are always tempted to believe that it has to depend on me. There must be something that I have to do in order to qualify and to be good enough. But it's not. It's a gift, 100%, the perfect righteousness of Christ through faith. In the end, as Paul points out in the epistle reading for today, Jesus was crucified by the people who refused to accept his offer of free and full forgiveness and righteousness. They didn't need it, so they didn't need Jesus. So they got rid of him. As Paul says, they crucified the Lord of glory. They crucified the Lord of glory. They just could not ever accept the fact that if they were ever to be good enough, it had to be through faith in Christ, not by their own good works. So your righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. The good news is that it already does. That is because it is not your righteousness. It is the righteousness of Christ bestowed on you through his almighty powerful word and sacraments. So now go and live in the wisdom of God by living up to the righteousness you already have. In other words, be the salt of the earth and be the light of the world. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We join together in the Nicene Creed. I invite you to stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our special prayers today, we'll include a prayer for Gorka Michelena, that is our grandson, who's uh, on his second trip to the ER today. Let us pray. O Jesus, King of glory, both David's Lord and Son, your realm endures forever in heaven is your throne. Aid that in earth's dominions from pole to farthest pole, your reign may spread salvation to each benighted soul. The eastern sages kneeling their richest treasures bring, where witnessing your glory they worship you, their king. To you the star is pointing, the sure prophetic word, so joyously we hail you our Savior and our Lord. You are a mighty monarch, as by your word is told, yet you care very little for earthly goods or gold. You come not proudly riding, you seek no great renown, you dwell in no high castle, you wear no jeweled crown. Yet you are decked with beauty, with rays of glorious light. Your works proclaim your goodness, and all your ways are right. 
O Lord, protect your people with your almighty arm, that they may dwell in safety from those who mean them harm. O look on me with pity, though I am weak and poor. Admit me to your kingdom to dwell there, blessed and sure. I pray, Lord, guide and keep me, safe from my bitter foes, from sin and death and Satan. Free me from all my woes. Then let your word within me shine as the fairest star, your reign of love revealing how wonderful you are. Help me confess you truly, and with your Christendom, here own you King and Savior with all the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, Father in heaven, watch over your child, Gorka Michelena, now afflicted with illness. Mercifully spare the life you have given, restore his strength and heal his body, protect him from all danger, and restore his health according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We receive the offering. You may be seated. Join in singing the offertory. of the sacrament, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, 
and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We join in the post-communion canticle. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex because Lent is coming in just a couple of weeks. And on Ash Wednesday, which is Wednesday, February 22nd, we're going to have a soup supper starting at 4.30. So if you've got the best soup recipe in the world, go ahead and sign up there on the... Um, Sign up sheet to help provide soup for our soup supper serving will start at 4.30. And I guess you can't have a supper without dessert, so if you can't make soup, go ahead and sign up to bring a dessert as well. <clears throat> I don't know if they called you smart in school or not, or if you were one of the average people, 
but uh, there's a whole different kind of wisdom that is only taught by the Holy Spirit. And we've talked about that today, and that is the wisdom that says, I'll never be good enough, but in Christ, I'm perfect. And I am salt, and I am light, so now I can go forth and be salt and light in this world, what I already am in Christ.